Right now I'm in the Karnak Temple, one of the largest uh, temple complexes in the world. Hello guys from Luxor. Um, right now I'm in the Karnak Temple, which is one of the largest uh, temple complexes in the world. And I am just exploring this amazing place. I made an introduction, but I didn't have the mic plugged in. But I found a tourist uh, guide just hanging outside the temple. I was planning on picking up one of the stragglers that, you know, there's a lot of tour guides that are usually outside of a temple. Um, or sites and offering to guide you around so I wanted a little bit more information this time so I found uh, this lady Eleanor from Turkey and she took me around and um, so you'll see some of that but um, she's left now and I'm just be able to explore this place at my own pace. The Karnak Temple in Luxor dates back to around 2055 BC. It developed over a period of more than 1,000 years added to by generation after generation of pharaohs, resulting in a collection of temples, sanctuaries, pylons, and other decorations that is unparalleled throughout Egypt. It was built as a cult temple and was dedicated to the gods Amun, Mut, and Khonsu. Amun was the Egyptian god of the sun and air. Mut, meaning mother, was a goddess worshipped by ancient Egyptians and for some, she was known as the mother of everything in the world. For others, they recognized her as the mother of the moon child god, Khonsu. Known as the son of goddess Mut, Khonsu was the ancient Egyptian god of the moon. The meaning of his name is traveler. During the New Kingdom, the Karnak Temple was the center of the ancient faith. Being the largest building for religious purposes ever to be constructed, the Karnak Temple was known as the most select of places by ancient Egyptians. In addition to its religious significance, it also served as a treasury, administrative center, and palace for the New Kingdom pharaohs. Karnak is an open-air museum and, to this day, is considered to be the largest religious building or site in the world. As you approach the Karnak Temple, you'll see an avenue of sphinxes leading up to the first pylon in what is now the main entrance of the temple today. These sphinxes are ram-headed, symbolizing the god Amun, and a small effigy of Ramses II, in the form of Osiris, stands between their front paws. Upon entering the Great Court, we see the remnants of columns now only one intact column remaining. Originally, there were 10 papyrus columns linked by a low screening wall. It is believed that it was a Barak chapel, although some Egyptologists think it may have been used in ritual activities to join with the sun. A little south of the second pylon is the Barak chapel of Ramses III. Inside the chapel, the first small court is lined with Osfride statues of the king. The west side wear the red crown of the south, while those on the east side wear the white crown of the north. Near the second pylon, you'll notice the statue of Ramses II, wearing the Nemes headdress with double crown of Upper and Lower Egypt. His arms are crossed and he is holding crook and flail, symbols of kingship. At his feet, a princess holds a flower and wears a crown of rearing cobras. And now we are entering the great hypostyle hall. 5,000 square meters, large enough to comfortably fit the Cathedral of Notre Dame. The massive columns in this hypostyle hall dwarf any person wandering among them. 
134 gigantic stone columns with 12 larger columns standing 24 meters high, lining the central aisle. There is still some paint surviving on the underside of the capitals. The hall was built by Seti I, who inscribed the northern wing. The southern wing was completed by Ramses II, and later pharaohs added inscriptions to the walls and columns. So, looks like they're restoring, cleaning the temple here. Cool. <laughs> <laughs>